Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us, our Facebook Live session uh, with Mariposa Community Health Center. Before we begin, I want to thank Mariposa for uh, allowing us to be here and certainly our colleague, uh, Edgardo Munoz, for, for helping us through all of that. Uh, my name is Eladio Pereira. I'm the Chief Medical Officer at Mariposa. And with me, I have two esteemed colleagues, uh, Patty and Dr. Williams. Patty, you want to introduce yourself, please? Oh, yes, of course. Hello, good morning. This is Patty Molina. I am the Senior Director of Community Health Services with Mariposa Community Health Center. And I'm uh, Philip Williams. I'm a pediatrician by training and also the Associate Medical Director at Mariposa. Great, welcome. So this week is National Health Center Week. Uh, as you know, Mariposa is a federally qualified community health center, and we'll go over that a little later. Uh, but this is a week in which we celebrate uh, the accomplishments of community health centers that began many, many years ago to provide primary care and give uh, good access of health care to our community. Uh, we're celebrating that this week. We have a number of activities at Mariposa. I'm going to let uh, Patty review what it, the week is like, uh, what the intent of the week is, and of course our health fair. So, Patty? Great. Thank you, Dr. P. So uh, National Health Center Week, uh, every August, the National Association for Community Health or of Community Health Centers sponsors National Health Center Week. And this is a week long event where we actually get to celebrate and honor the work being done in communities where there are federally qualified health centers. We thank the community for providing support to the health centers. We thank our board and we thank all of our healthcare providers and, uh, and all of the workers in health centers. During this week, what we're doing is we get to celebrate the entire week, celebrating ourselves and celebrating you, our patients and the community that we serve. So every day we've been doing something different. We've been having a spirit week during the week where we get dressed up. Today's date is work from home day so you're prepared nice and neat from the top because you are doing a zoom meeting of course but on the bottom you're nice and comfy in your pjs and i don't know if you guys can see me and my slippers so but every day we have something neat yesterday was twin day tomorrow is tropical day thursday is going to be nerd day and thursday we're actually sponsoring a health fair we're going to have a lot of local community organizations that are going to join us for this event we have a lot of different activities that are taking place. We're gonna have screenings for our patients and these are all free of charge. We're gonna have me medication reconciliation with our pharmacy team. We're also gonna have uh, the University of Arizona's public health, the mobile unit come down and provide HIV testing too, if that's something that you're interested in. But overall that day, we're all gonna be dressed up as nerds. So don't be surprised when you see us. And then Friday, it's really a day to help um, uh, support the staff and really highlight us and what we're doing and be thankful for the work that we do. That day we're going to be dressed as, um, I think it's um, movie stars, right? Or something like that. So, yeah. But overall, we invite you to the fair Thursday. It's going to be at the main campus, 1852 North Mastic Way. It'll be from 9 o'clock in the morning till 12, completely free. So come stop by and say hello. So, Thank you, Patty. And I think this is a reminder uh, to uh, thank Patty and her department for an outstanding job they do in the community. They conduct so many activities. Uh, sometimes we forget how much they do, but thank you, Patty, for, for leading that effort. And, you know, one of the distinctions uh, that community health centers have is that they're able to connect to the community. Uh, when you go to other types of practices, that connection is not there. That's what we call a community health center is to link healthcare to community. And, and I think our department does that very, very well. So th thank you, Patty. Uh, I'm going to have Dr. Williams move on to our pediatric services, a very important service that we offer um, from you know, birth to uh, a little older adolescent. So I'm going to let Dr. Williams review that for us. And then I'll move to other things as well. So, Dr. Williams. No, thank you, Dr. Pereira. You know, we're really lucky here at Mariposa that we really have a great team of pediatricians, um, including myself. We now have, have eight eight pediatricians, and essentially what we do is is kind of um, we divide our services into two. 
One is that we provide physicals, meaning that we check your development, make sure that the kids are growing okay. And then um, we also do sports physicals, school physicals. And then the second major thing that we do are what we call acute visits. So that means that your kid is sick or you know, they may have an injury. And we are really lucky to provide services at multiple locations, both in Rio Rico, also in, in Nogales. Um, we also have some family practice uh, providers who also see kids as well, both at our main campus and at our Nogales West location right next to the hospital. Um, in addition to uh, physicals and sick visits, we of course do um, and promote vaccines as well. Just as a reminder that uh, probably in late August, we're gonna get our flu shots in stock. I'm sure we'll have another Facebook Live session just to talk about flu shots, but that is coming. Um, but we uh, wanna make sure that all the kids are, are vaccinated. And a common vaccine that a lot of parents um, um, forget about is the HPV vaccine. HPV, of course, is to prevent uh, a virus called a human papillomavirus. That virus can cause um, warts, but then it can also um, cause a cancer. There's multiple what we call serotypes. So 16 and 18 is most, is most commonly associated with cancer. So it really is a cancer prevention vaccine that we really encourage everyone to get starting at age 11. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a vaccine series. Um, and, you know, in addition to providing services at the clinic, we're really lucky here at, in Santa Cruz County that we're able to provide pediatric services at the hospital as well. As well. A lot of rural areas do not have hospital pediatric services, meaning that patients have to go all the way to you know, Tucson or you know, they have to drive an, over an hour just to get pediatric services. But we're really lucky here that our pediatricians um, cover the hospital. So that means that um, if the a patient comes to the ER, if the ER doctor, um, they, they sometimes consult the pediatricians. We also do inpatient admissions. So if someone has dehydration, pneumonia, a urinary tract infection, you know, really any kind of basic thing um, that needs hospitalization, we can do that here. We don't have to send the patients up north. And then of course, we also provide newborn services as well, meaning that we cover the newborn nursery. We even cover um, high risk delivery. So lots and lots of services here. We work really closely with Patty's team and our community health services team um, to not only provide services in the clinic, the hospital, but also in, in our community. Great. And, and I want to go back to what you said that many small hospitals do not offer pediatric inpatient services. We're very fortunate that, that we do, that our pediatricians have that level of competency to, to be able to do that. But if the child needs a different level of care, we have good relationship with our specialists in Tucson. You want to comment on that extended uh, expertise that we have available? No, of course. So, um, you know, Banner um, University Hospital and also uh, TMC are the two big pediatric referrals hospital. And honestly, we have great relationship uh, with both hospitals. If we have a patient that, um, one, we may just have a question, you know, we may uh, not need to transfer them, but they may, we may need to consult with a cardiologist or, or pulmonologist or endocrinologist. We can do that and there's a system in place where essentially um, we call one number and we're in contact with them. Um, but then if patients do need to be transferred, then uh, we also help to facilitate that as well. You know? Great. Going back to vaccines, there's one vaccine that, that sometimes we, we tend to forget and is the meningitis vaccine, particularly mm -hmm before um, going to college. Mm -hmm. uh, when you go to college, sometimes you sleep in the dorms, fairly congested, and that's where these respiratory pathogens are transmitted. You wanna comment on, on the meningitis vaccine? Yeah, and no, I'm so glad you brought that up. So there's also a series of vaccines we typically give at 11 and then um, give again at age 16. And, you know, invasive meningitis can cause a lot of issues. So yeah. the meninges basically is a lining that covers the brain and there's both viruses and bacteria that can cause infection of that, that can really have devastating effects in kids and adults. Mm -hmm. So the vaccine is really, really effective to prevent it. Um, I remember my early, early days is when I was in med school was when um, the use of the meningitis vaccine wasn't as, as widespread as it is now. And we would occasionally see cases of invasive meningitis. Since I've been here, because our vaccination rates are so high, I think I've seen maybe one case in the last 13 years. So it's extremely rare, really due to vaccines. Right. 
I will go back to Patty. Patty, you do a lot of programs at CHS or community health services, a lot of them. You review the health fair and those other kind of things you do. But is there anything particular among your programs that you wanted to let, let our audience know uh, that you do? You do a lot of diabetes prevention, certainly or some of youth. Anything particular that you want to cover this morning? Well, certainly, I mean, we have a lot of health promotion disease prevention programs uh, all the time, and we always have something going on. But just keeping in the theme with um, support services for our pediatric patients, we do have our maternal child health program that is always open and available, and that's something that anyone who, we, we really hope to support prenatals at that at that moment and we can provide that support for prenatal and then postnatal up until the child is two years old. And there's a lot of a lot of resources that are available through that program if that uh, patient qualifies for that or the participant qualifies for that. And then of course we also have our WIC services as, as well, which everyone in the community is familiar with, our Women, Infants and Children's program that also provides a lot of the same services and support along with the vouchers so that they can do some grocery shopping with that up until the child is five years of age. And just please understand that these programs, you do have to qualify for them, but they are completely free. You don't need to pay anything for them. So those are, those are really good programs that I can mention right now. Great. And those are services that are available to the community. All they have to do is call us and find out if, if they may be interested. Correct. And regardless of whether they're a patient of Mariposa's or not. So everyone can. Yes. Pick. Our pharmacy. Our pharmacy does a great job for us, um, outstanding service. You want to expand on, on what we offer to our patients? You know, we're really lucky here um, in Santa Cruz County to have so robust um, pharmacy services. So our main pharmacy location is located in, in, in Nogales at our main campus. But then we also have, um, have satellite pharmacies as well, both in Rio Rico. We also offer pharmacy services in, in Patagonia. Um, and then um, we have prescription um, um, uh, uh, pickup resources um, in Tubac, and we have a pharmacist there on m most days of the week. So they fill a large volume of prescriptions. I can't even tell you how many prescriptions that they right. fill per day. And it, uh, they also do, 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 do uh, de delivery services. Yeah. So, I mean, they're, it, it's, it's amazing all the work that they do. Yeah, and we're gonna start doing home delivery on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that started, but it's about to start very soon if he hasn't already. Absolutely, right. absolutely. And then consistent with, with Patty's comment about National Health Center Week, um, as an FQAC, we, we pay a lot of attention to the services we offer. We keep expanding services to be able to maintain health locally. And as such, over the years, we've, we've grown quite a bit. Uh, from the early days of well child visits and exams, to doing adult care uh, in the 80s. And over time, we've been adding more and more services. A lot of it comes from patient feedback, actually. Um, not just the pharmacy, to keep our pharmacy local, but we have added dental uh, services in, in the 90s. We've added uh, behavioral health, a, a sort of an integrated model. And as of, as of last year, October, we do more specialty behavioral health. Most of it is telehealth because of just the workforce issue, but also uh, in-person counseling for the more, more uh, di difficult situations. Um, we also have a space that we lease to specialists, our uh, former Unisource building, uh, not far from Walmart. We call it IMS, Independent Medical Specialist. We're able to bring specialists in nephrology and vascular, and we hope to reach an agreement soon with other specialties so that more and more patients can not just get primary care, but also specialty care, and to so only for more um, sort of difficult situations, either uh, outpatient or, um, or office, office kind of work. Um, just, uh, I'll, I'll finalize, I'll, I'll, I'll end the discussion this morning with, with going back to NAC, National Association of Community Health Centers, and, and the, the week that we are celebrating. Um, you know, FQICs have a, a pretty special place in, in a heart uh, that were being started in the 1960s under the Lyndon 
the Johnson administration to bring healthcare closer to people and to address some of the more difficult social issues that we face um, and that we make healthcare available to all, regardless of the ability to pay. And that's what we do at Mariposa. We not only provide primary care, but we have expanded services that we just discussed. But we also have departments um, that enable that service. So we have transportation to appointments. We have a department of care coordination that allows uh, our staff to assist individuals with sort of navigating the healthcare system, which sometimes can be quite complex. So as we celebrate this week, we remember that certainly healthcare, we think, is, is accessible to uh, our community, but also that we understand uh, the social issues, we call them uh, the social determinants of health, uh, but that we, we realize that sometimes we, we struggle with some of the common things such as transportation. So want to reassure community that we, we pay attention to that. We will continue to grow to bring um, more and more services. I think over the year, our community will see that we will, will grow, not just physically, but also in terms of services. So, um, I want to thank our audience for allowing us to uh, be at their home today. I want to ask Patty, do you have any final thoughts before we conclude? Just don't forget about the health fair on Thursday, 9 to 12, completely free at the main campus, 1852 North Mastic Way. Thank you, Patty. Dr. Williams, any final thoughts? Don't remember to get your, your physical. You can either get your sports physical or your routine physical. There's slight differences, but um, uh, we have availability and just call and we're happy to see your son or daughter. Great. And with that, we'll end our broadcast today. Thank uh, to our colleague for being here today. Thank you to Mariposa and Edgardo for making this possible. See you the next time. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.